I've skated hundreds, if not thousands, of ramps through my career. Some were good, but every can ramp through this? the years was you can hear it? kind of a crapshoot. And most ramps were almost always a little flawed, so one wall was different than the other wall. And up until we had this ramp, you had to adapt to it. Well, this ramp was the centerpiece of the Boom Boom Huck Sham Tour which included big air jumps and things like this, but this kind of set the standard for how ramps could be. My ramp is 13 and a half feet tall. It's got an 11 and a half foot radius or transition. The channel is eight feet wide. This is a perfect ramp. And once we built this, both walls were exactly the same. This perfect radius, super smooth. And so now you're able to actually focus on just the hardest Waz tricks. It's seen some of the best vertical riding ever. It was designed so that it could be taken apart and put back together on tour, on the road. And so it fits perfectly into an arena. I mean, it's, it literally was built for an arena setting. So bringing my whole ramp there to vert alert, it's the perfect storm. And it's such a fitting venue for a Legends demo coming up. So enjoy. Welcome skateboarders. This is Tony Hawk's Vert Alert 2023. We are live from Salt Lake City. The Delta Center is rocking, and we want all of you to come knocking. This is a free event, and the reason we have a packed arena is because we're going to kick off the Tony Hawk's Vert Alert Weekend with the ultimate, the Legends Jam. I am Chris Cote. I am sitting next to one of the most stylish vert skaters to ever do it. This is Paul Zitzer. Thank you, Chris. I didn't mean to, You're too to kind. embarrass you to start the show, but it's true. Thank you. Well, what we have for you tonight is going to be a, a, a show like you may have seen last year when we had that epic Legends demo, but tonight we've got some new names, but the faces you will know, these are basically the skaters that created skateboarding as we know it now. That's exactly right. It's called the Legends demo for a reason. All these skaters up here, they didn't just influence a generation of skaters. They influenced all of skateboarding and will continue to do so for all time because they invented everything we're seeing in skateboarding. Everything we're going to see tomorrow in the men's and women's finals pushed to the next level. You're going to see where it all came from tonight here in the Legends demo. Literally hundreds of years of skateboarding knowledge right behind us on the world's best vertical half pipe. This is Tony Hawk's version of a backyard ramp. It's absolutely perfect. And the cool part about this is a lot of the skaters we have practicing, warming up behind us for this Legends demo get to skate this thing all the time. So they're used to the ramp. They're ready to put on a good show. I mean, this is multi-generational skaters. You know, we have your dad's favorite skater skating. We have your cousin's favorite skater skating. Every skater on the deck right now is a bona fide legend. That's right. If you skated in the 1980s, these are the people that were in the magazines every month on the cover. If you skated in the 90s, you had people like Mike Frazier putting it down. Mike Crum, they're here tonight. If you skate in the 2000s, we got Lindsay Pastrana. She's the young gun out here at 33. But wow, what a lineup. Yeah, what would you say? I mean, uh, obviously age is just a number to these people behind us, especially that guy, Tony Hawk, but uh, average age, 50? It's probably about 50, which is crazy because honestly, if you grew up skating from the start when skating was just figuring itself out, skaters tended to be done by about 20. By 25, you were just an ancient dinosaur. Get off the ramp, get out of here. Things changed, obviously. We've got skaters in their mid-50s, late-50s now, and they're still killing it. That's Kevin Staub in the pink helmet. Dude, he's coming off a broken femur, too. When he skates, it's so sick. He rips. Oh, this is going to be so fun. You're going to see signature moves. You're going to see all those graphics that we all grew up worshiping and idolizing icons of skateboarding. And guess what? They're not doing this for prize money. They're not doing it to win. They're doing it 
to celebrate skateboarding, to hopefully inspire all of you out there to uh, take up skating yourself. You don't have to, you know, drop into a 13 and a half foot ramp, yeah. grab your skateboard, go out and ride. This will get you inspired to do just that, guaranteed. And that's exactly it, you know. When skateboarding was probably 1980s, you might win $100 if you won a pro contest. So it was never about the money. That has never changed. You can't even, you can't get good chasing dollars. You get good by being passionate and loving it. And that's what you see from all these skaters out here. They wouldn't be doing it at this age if they weren't totally in love with skateboarding. And we are going to dig deeper into some of the stories of the skaters that you're going to be watching tonight. We've got about an hour. So we're going to try to pack as many stories, as many facts as many uh you know of the cool kind of behind the scenes things that go into becoming a skate legend like mike crumb i would say we've got a really cool eclectic mix right you've got tony hawk you've got christian Hasoy, yeah all-time superstars of our sport right. then you got guys like mike frazier mike crumb who in their own way changed skateboarding and Absolutely. how people skate vert yeah they progressed skateboarding a ton it just happened to be during the decade of the 90s where not that many people were paying much attention. So obviously all for the love, but yeah, you're gonna see all the different styles. Of course, Bucky Lassick, and we've said this before, he probably shouldn't be skating tonight, not because he's not a legend, he absolutely is, but he should be in the pro contest because you're gonna see how good he is. He's only 25 years old, right? Times two, yeah. Some, some people are just built different, and I think every person on the ramp right now is built a little bit different to be able to skate at this level and stay at this level. I mean, anyone who's ever learned a kickflip, you know you got to keep practicing that kickflip to keep the kickflip, because right. it will go away. You can imagine the hundreds and hundreds of tricks that these skaters have, you know, in their in their notebooks, in their files, in their brain, and yeah. we're going to see a lot of them tonight. You know, and to, to keep all your tricks, you have to skate so much. And as you get older, most people have, they've got jobs, responsibilities, families, kids. It gets harder and harder to skate that much, and you start losing tricks really easy, and it's very difficult to get them back. And, and you know what? I'm going to be honest. We're going to see people struggling a little bit tonight, too, because not all these people skate every day. Some do, some don't. See the difference? Well, I mean, you know, that's a... Uh, you got a guy... <laughs> every, every skater that's going to drop in, right, they all have pioneered a specific element of skateboarding, right? Sandro Diaz, I mean, he was one of the first guys to break into the double digits, right, in his airs. Yeah, so he he's, yeah, he's that, that guy that was like, oh no, you can go 12, 13, 14 feet. Right, and Sandro took um, the 900 and put it in his contest runs. Like, he was the first person to do that. He made it just a normal thing to do, and then We'll see tomorrow people throwing 900s. It's still not easy. But. I can't wait. This is yeah. definitely a, a fan favorite part of Tony Hawk's Bird Alert weekend. And speaking of fan favorites, well, the judges are going to be picking their favorites. And we will be qualifying skaters for the upcoming X Games. That will happen July 21st and 23rd. It's going to be in Ventura, California. So not a lot of pathways into X Games, but one of them is right here. So tomorrow we have our men's and women's finals. We're going to be qualifying X Games athletes eight women and six men. Yeah, and that's such a big deal because X Games traditionally has been an invitational. So there's always some people where you think, hey, maybe they should have been in there, maybe not. But here's where you can win your way in, no questions asked. Can't wait to see what happens next. We'll crank up the music. It's time to party here at the Delta Arena in Salt Lake City to kick off the Legends Jam. Let's throw it up to the legendary Jason Ellis. Hello, Utah. Anybody there? Utah, are you with me? Are we there? No, we're not. We're going to go ahead and crank Jason Ellis's mic up as loud as it goes. Yeah, that's the, like the way he lives. Yeah. Yeah, we just had to test it right there, but we have Jason Ellis up on the deck. He's going to be doing double duty. He's going to be skating, and he's going to be announcing for the crowd. Check, check. Hey, Utah, how's it going? Hey, you guys ready for the Legends demo? 
Come on, Utah, we came a long way. Are you guys ready for the Legends demo? It's going to be a great show. We've got a lot of people here that have paid their dues and then some. And they're going to be giving their all for you guys. So I need you all to be loud when all of us drop in. The louder you are, the more we can do. Okay? Don't worry. I'll... That's a good job. That's a good job. But we're going to do way better. And now the man of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to my good friend, Tony Hall. What's up, Salt Lake City? How are you? Thank you. I want to thank you all for coming out here to support this uh, unique Vert event. I, I want to tell you a little bit how this whole thing started. In recent years, I've seen some, uh, I've seen Vert skating mostly kind of getting pushed aside in terms of being considered a discipline in skateboarding because there was so much emphasis on park skating. And I understand because there's a lot of skate parks and that's an Olympic event, that's an Olympic event now. But I also feel like you don't see half the tricks that you see on the vert ramp out in the skate park in events. And for some reason, people just weren't acknowledging that. And I thought, you know what? I've got a ramp. Why don't I put it up somewhere and uh, let's, let's celebrate vert again. And this is the third, third vert alert. This is our third one in Salt Lake City. And uh, last two years, we were over at the rodeo. We're moving on up here, the Delta Center. Thanks to Ryan Smith for inviting us. And uh, I want to give a really special thanks to Jeff Robbins and the Utah Sports Commission, because uh, without their support, we wouldn't have been here from the first year. And I can't believe we keep growing this thing and it keeps getting better, but it's thanks to you guys and for thanks for showing up and supporting all these skaters. I mean, you've seen what happened today. Can you tell me the bird is dead? Nah, nah, man. Uh, so that's it. This is, uh, these are some of the legends, pioneers of our sport. Uh, you know their names. You've probably seen them skate, but it's going to be an honor to see them skate in person. Everyone's, uh, Everyone is jumbled up over there, so I'm gonna get him wrong, but I can see Kevin Staub, because his helmet's right there. In the pink helmet, Kevin Staub. And next to him, we got our newcomer to Vert Alert, Mike Crum. And uh, the guy who doesn't know where he belongs, is he a pro skater, is he a master, is he a legend? He's all the above, Mr. Bucky Lasik. And the legend, the legend, the inventor of the McTwist, Mr. Mike McGill. Who else is over there that I'm missing? Christian Asoy is here! Right here from Brazil, Mr. Sandro Diaz, high flyer, one of the few to make a 900. And uh, our, our, we're so honored to have the legend of Earth, the very first woman to do a McTwist, Miss Lindsay Adams Hawkins Mastrana. <laughs> Next to her, a veteran of this ramp, Boom Boom Hakshim, pioneer, legend, and good friend, Lincoln Ueda. And last but not least, did I get everyone on, open on the deck? Last but not least, your favorite vert skater's favorite vert skater, Mr. Mike Frazier. And uh, I'm Tony Hawk, and we're going to skate for a bit, so enjoy. Thank you. Give it up for Tony Hawk, everybody. Talk about the ultimate backyard session. I love that Tony introduced all of those skaters as if they needed an introduction. I mean, these are skaters that have literally been doing it for decades. And again, you know, these are pioneers. You, you could list all the tricks invented by this crew and that would be hundreds, I mean, is that? Too uh, much? Uh, thousands. Thousands. There's definitely thousands. Frazier, Frazier's got a few hundred, and uh, obviously Tony Hawk has a few hundred, but this is Mike Crum. I can remember the first time I ever saw Mike Crum skate. It was at an NSA contest in 1990, and he blew my mind. That was it. I was like, this dude, he's unbelievable. So smooth, so controlled. 
great style Texas. All right, Dallas, Texas. The Lincoln Ueda, I mean, this guy is just known for full speed flight. Right. Does anybody go higher than Lincoln Ueda? No. And if you were a skater in the 80s, you remember Lester Kasai. He was sort of the, the original high flyer. And, and Lincoln is very reminiscent of Lester. He just sort of took the torch and ran with it, and he's still running with it. He'll go 10 feet. Oh, this guy looks like he's pretty good. Yes. Ever heard of him? <laughs> Tony, Tony Hawk. I mean, you love to see it. And this is his brainchild, so, you know, he doesn't have to be doing this. Obviously, he's got a million things to do. He loves vert skating he so much it. that he is single-handedly carrying the torch. I say this as much as I can, but Tony Hawk, I claim, is actually underrated. He's that great. Underrated. Yes. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, but that's how good he is. When I you skate you. with him, every time he blows your mind. And then Bucky Lassick. Representing NC is California, skateboarding hotbed. Bucky, of course, rally, car, rally cross driver, uh, amazing vert skater, innovator of upside down antics on a vert ramp. And you know, he's one of those interesting skaters that started to come up in the late, late 1980s. So just caught that, that tail end of things. And then in the 90s, he just exploded. Like talent wise, he did every single trick. And why is Mike Frazier your favorite Vert skater's favorite vert skater. Because he does such hard tricks that are so rad, and he's always skated with so much power, and he has more determination than anyone. He's just relentless, and he loves to skate. Tricks like that, fakie disaster, backside revert, he's just not afraid of anything. Re he's a revert champ. Wow. It's the subtle difficulty of Mike Frazier. I feel like his skating is even more dangerous than guys that are just doing big airs because he's doing everything the hardest way possible out of right, the train. Right. He looks for the hard way out. Always. So you're right. There's there's flashy flying around 540 type of skating and then there's Mike Frazier type of skating. But Sandro Diaz is another Brazilian that can hit the roof. It's just too good. Watching him skate, I don't understand where he gets that kind of speed. He can drop in and go six feet on the first wall, maybe seven feet. Brazilian I, skate pioneer, for sure. Yes. Right? Kicked down a lot of doors for other Brazilian skateboarders to make it on the international scene. Jason Ellis, not just a hilarious stand-up comedian, not just a globally renowned podcaster, also an incredible skateboarder that does his own unique brand of tricks. We could talk more about him when he's back on the ramp, but first, we've got Christian Hasoy. I mean, 1980s, Hawk versus Hasoy defined the decade. I'm glad that they're was, friends now. <laughs> it was it was Hawk's tricks versus Hasoy's airs, and we were just talking to Christian about that, and he was saying that forced him to get out of his comfort zone and learn more tricks. He's like, I wouldn't have learned those tricks, but I had to. And then he said, I forced Hawk to go higher too, so I love hearing that stuff from those guys. When we talk about skaters that are innovators, Kevin Staub innovating not only with fashion, but also you got to thank him for the blunt fakie. Exactly. Now, the blunt has changed a lot over the years. When he made it up, it was grabbing and yanking it back in. But such a gnarly trick to invent back then. That, that's deadly to be the first person to put yourself in the blunt position. I can't even imagine. Yeah. And obviously, Mick Gill, Mick Twist, uh, one of the most iconic skateboarding tricks there is, invented by Mike McGill. Yeah, if not the, it's it's like the Ollie and then maybe the <laughs> McTwist. Well, are you that good? Can you McTwist? Yeah. yeah. He is from Encinitas, California, by way of Florida, way long ago. Mike McGill's skate Florida. shop, yeah. still one of our, our OG shop in Encinitas. Mike Crum. One of the cool things about the era that these guys come from is Crum was from Texas. In fact, he was from Dallas. So there were different scenes all over, vert scenes in every city, and everybody skated different. You could almost tell where people were from based on how they skated. Like, you know, Florida, Texas, California, and then Northeast, like skaters from Pennsylvania, all different. I feel like vert skating through the years has definitely brought people together, right? If you got Texas, you had people living all around, but there was probably only one ramp in that area. Everybody met there. Oh, the Spaghetti Western getting away. Let's not forget that Tony Hawk 
could not walk about a year ago. Your gnarly femur break. We see Lindsay Adams Hawkins Pastrana. She's so good they named her six times. So she's living on the East Coast now, originally from California, right. transplanted to the Northeast. She doesn't have access to a vert ramp. She said she skates vert about two times a year. That's she's that, she's that good. Whoa, Bucky! Yeah. Did you see that? Nolly flip. Bucky Melon. might think that there's like $50,000 on the line. See? The way he's skating. You, Ellis just said on the mic that no one can do any of these tricks, and he's right. Pro pros cannot do these tricks. You don't do a nolly flip melon on vert. You have to be a magician. You have to be Bucky. You know, I just, I love how much these skateboarders love skateboarding, right? You can feel it every time they drop in. Lincoln Ueda. Lincoln, you saw him miss the pump a little bit. And when you're going that fast and miss the pump, it can be so deadly. He hung on, but it, it definitely affected the rest of that run. And you could see him like, whoo. And yeah. if, this, if this was a father-son jam, Lincoln and his son Rocky would win. Oh, his son is incredible as well. He's next level. You're right. Wow, that front side air! So Sandro has a signature trick that I think is probably one of the scariest tricks ever invented. What is it? The nar jar. The nar jar. Nose grab, backside 540 to body jar. To, so to tail on the way in. And when you do a body jar, it's an early trick. In fact, last year, Jason Ellis hung up on a body jar, a standard one, and it ruined his year. So to do a 540 into it, next level heavy duty. Mike Frazier. Give me some videos that I can watch of Mike Frazier from the past couple of decades that get me even more hyped on Mike Frazier. Powell 8 for one. That was like his first they, that his debut part, it blew everyone's minds. And from there, he was in so many, he was in the early stereo videos and the first birdhouse videos. Um, you do? That was me. That was you. Yeah. I see, I Don't, keep thinking about you. Yeah, I appreciate that, yeah. but that's, yeah. So there's plenty of, of Mike, there's so many Mike Frazier parts. He has probably 20 legendary parts. And, you know, you can't really think of these skaters without thinking of the iconic graphics, the Mike Frazier uh, muscle guy. That's a reissue that's coming out right now, I believe. Get after it, if you can. If, uh, if you have right the there. original, <laughs> if you have the original, you, you, you're paid. That's a great point. So, you see the crowd behind these skaters, right? We've got an arena full of skate fans. The coolest part about it, we're talking men, women, and children, fathers, daughters, I mean, families all here. And it's so sick to look up at the multi-generational fan base that these skaters have. You've literally seen 10-year-olds to the left. We've got a 50-year-old dude here trying to get his board autographed right here. So it's an autograph hunter's dream. And really, one of the few times that you would be able to get to see these guys skating in real life. And trust me, it's uh, I'd say it's even more impressive in real life because you can feel the speed and the power that they're skating with. If you like Vert, you're going to love it when you see it live. It's so different because it's so... Um, I, it's so exciting to see when you're on the deck and people are flying over your head. It's pretty, pretty bonkers. Uh, Tony is ripping. Blunt, fakey, fakey pivot. Here we go. Front, basically front crook, fakey. So hard to come in on that. And then straight back to 1983, backside boneless. So that was our tech Tony run. Give me some fundamentals, right? Give me some tricks that a lot of these skaters are watching right now may have pioneered or invented that are kind of prerequisites, right? If you want to be a good vert skater, you have to do these five tricks. You should learn good rock and rolls, good grinds, front side and back side, proper backside airs, proper front side airs. If you can learn the, those tricks, you, that's the, those are the building blocks to everything. And a, a hand plant too. In fact, learn a hand plant because they're easier than they look, and they're really fun, and it's the most satisfying trick to learn. You're like, I can hand plant. That's a, a hand plant, any variation of a hand plant is always going to be a crowd pleaser, too. All right, Bucky coming in with a big air. Front side, five over that channel. Now, just from having skated this ramp, when you're riding up and there's that channel that's a hole in the ramp, it can freak your mind out so bad. It can get right in there and you're like, nah, I'm not messing with that thing. 
So this ramp is what, 13 and a half feet high. That channel is eight feet eight wide. Feet wide yeah. That's a long eight feet too. It, it looks like 12 feet. And, and it's one of those things, you just have to really time your, well, you have to aim correctly. If you, that was six, switch, shove it. Tail slide crumb, that is a crumb classic. Yeah, he used crumb. to finish just about every one of his contest runs with that trick. And he would he was one of those dudes famous for staying on. He would always stay on. Look at how sick Lindsay is. Tuck me eggplant. That's a rad trick. Front side inverts. Lindsay is definitely the gnarliest pastrana. A lot of people think her husband Travis is like yeah. wild and crazy guy. No question. Lindsay is the one that pushes progression in the pastrana family. Yeah. Uh, she's the, probably one of the most radical skate moms ever. But she's right there. She just walked behind us. All right. Ellis is famous for coming out with one of the best frontside ollies ever. He was he was in the Planet Earth video. There was a voiceover. I think, I don't know, Chris Miller might have been talking about him, saying how rad his frontside ollies were. And uh, he was right. So, Hasoy, once again, he was the original high flyer. I mean, he went like 10, 11, 12 feet on much smaller ramps than this, which is psychotic. That's, yeah, I mean, and part of the best style ever in skateboarding. Well, check it out. If you're watching right now on Twitch or YouTube, we want to know who are you most excited to watch in this Legends demo? Tony Hawk. Christian Hasoy or Bucky Lasik. That's part one. You gotta pick between those three skaters. And don't worry, we won't tell them who you voted for. So you tell us on Twitch and YouTube, who are you hyped to watch? Tony, Christian, or Bucky? I mean, wow. I don't think I could pick. That backside ollie is so classic Kevin Staub. He does the toeiest backside ollie you could ever do, and he's always done it that way. And I don't know how he doesn't bail. He makes everyone. He's, he's, he's my favorite, I, and he's the best dude. I feel like vert skating, you have to really want it every trick you do, because every bail is gonna be taxing. Yeah. And that's what I, you know, when you see these guys right on the red line like that. Oh. I, I claim about, I mean, it's kind of true about skateboarding in general, but vert specifically, is if you want to get better, every single day you have to be fully willing to go to the hospital. That's <laughs> oh, it. God. That's it. If you are, then you can get good. You want if it? If you are not, you're going to have a tough go at things. And I'm not saying you're going every day. I'm just saying you have to be willing. you got to be willing to go. So, okay. We're, we're looking at some of the skaters that invented vert skating and changed everything, but let's talk a little bit. What what was that? That was the 360 burial, aka some people call it the champion. It's one of the flashiest moves of all time, and uh, the crowd has always loved the 360 burial. Um, but you know what? Once you learn a good backside air, give that trick a try. If you kick it hard enough and grab it, it comes back to your feet, you'll be glad. You can learn it. We're making it sound very easy, and I'm looking behind me at this ramp. It's huge, and I stood up there this morning, and I, I got a little bit of vertigo. It's a big ramp. It's a biggie. Yeah. So let's talk about the pro evolution or progression of ramps, right? So this right here is the most cutting edge, perfect vert ramp you can get. What types of ramp did uh, you know Tony and, and Mike Crum like which ramps did they kind of go through to get to where we are now? Well, for example, I think like Lance Mountain's first ramp, the famous one from the first Powell video, uh, his backyard ramp, there was probably an eight foot transition with maybe a foot and a half of vert. It could have been a smaller transition, so it's like you know a 10 foot tall ramp. And over the years, transitions kept getting bigger and mellower, which people kept realizing, wow, it's a little easier to skate because it gives me more time to set up and it makes falling a lot mellower because you have more transition to catch you on the way down. So this ramp is 11 and a half foot transition. So eight, nine, ten. it's like three and a half foot bigger curve than ramps from the 80s. And it took it took a good 25 years for ramps to sort of grow to that size. Does it take more work to generate speed on a ramp like this? Uh, in some ways, wow, that yeah, it was huge. <laughs> um, it takes a better technique. It, it, in, 
On a smaller ramp, you can keep your speed easier and you can blast one air better, but to keep your speed and go high on a huge ramp like this, you just need a refined technique. If you're skating and you're, you're skating properly, you can blast. And you couldn't do that on an eight foot transition. It, you have to just be, I mean, Hasoy, Hasoy was the one going eight and nine feet. Everybody else was going six feet. Double, pretty much the same height as the ramp itself. Crazy. Well, I do know where the first ever half pipe was built. Encinitas, California, where Bucky Lasik is from. It was called Rampage. Back in the day, some surfers built it because they saw cement pipes in the desert and they were going to try to steal one, but they figured that'd be a little, <laughs> be a little much, so they recreated the it. The logistics. Wood. Yeah. I, I've heard a little bit of conflicting reports about that versus the first backyard vert ramp in Florida. Or it may have been the it may have been the first one with flat bottom in Florida. East Coast versus West Coast. Oh, All right. beef. Yeah, yeah, that beef never fine. goes away. We want to keep it alive. Well, you, you want to talk skate beef? There's no more iconic skate beef than between Christian Asoy and Tony Hawk, talking late mid to late 80s, where it was every contest. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Christian? Is it going to be Tony? They went head to head, back to back, win for win throughout that entire time. And that was when skateboarding was filling the arenas for the first time. Yeah. And it's so rad to see them. And you know, right? There's no prize money. There's no winning this. They're competing no matter what, right? Oh, uh, Hawk going for a McTwist here. I don't know that he's done a McTwist since pre. Don't say it. Yeah, so all I'm going to say, what I'm going to I'm going to go back to what you were talking about in the arenas. I had the great pleasure to go to the Chicago Blowout in 1986, which was one of those first arena contests. And Hawk, Hasoy, Lance, McGill, Stop, they were all there. I didn't know. I was going. I heard there was a contest. I went. And I walked in and it just blew my mind and I've never been the same since. So I always think of that when I come to these things and I think these kids should be having that same experience, those same thoughts. And this is how many years later? Uh, many. 37, 38 years. Oh, oh my that's, gosh. That's why we love Frazier. Backside lip slide revert. This man is, it's subtle. But trust us when we say it's terrifying and it shouldn't be possible, and it really is only possible for Mike Frazier. Hey, you know what I'm gonna say about Mike Frazier? This is this is great. I was talking to Colin McKay recently. He skates, oh, from Signature Ali trick. Nolly. Signature trick, right? Yeah. Over, over the gap. So, Reese Nelson, who we'll see tomorrow in the women's final, she skates with Colin McKay, and Colin says, he tells Reese, to go back and watch Frazier parts. And watch Reese skate tomorrow, she does Mike Frazier tricks. And it's one, just one of the reasons why everybody loves her to, right now. And she's got a million more tricks too. Oh. There, there, there was the 360 burial from Sandro hitting the, hitting the roof once again. This is all time. So what we have for you here, the Legends demo, if you're just joining us, no prize money, no cash on the line. This is purely for the love of skateboarding and to share vert skating with all of you out there, with everybody in this arena. And trust us, the hype is real. This crowd is going wild as they should be. I mean, this is history in, in real life, a real life happening. And you can just tell by the, uh, the way Tony dropped in that he kind of goes into like shark eye mode, right? You see the, a different type of drop in when he's about to try something. And right there we saw it. We're seeing the, the wind up, the build up right now from Tony Hawk. And there has almost never been an instance where once he locks into that mode, where he doesn't walk away with, with the prize. Like what he's going for will be done, no matter what. So I think, uh, I think we're gonna be seeing a, a McTwist from Tony Hawk and it will be one of the most celebrated McTwist maybe of all time because just to have him out on the ramp after what he's been through the last two years is insane. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Talk about signature moves from, that was about to be wild. Hey, check it out. We've got winners from our YouTube and Twitch poll. YouTube fans are going 65% with the Birdman, Tony Hawk. Twitch, 
going. Bucky, 72% of our Twitch audience is on Team Bucky LASIK. And we'll be sure to tell these guys that Bucky's got the edge, and you know what that does. It's just going to push Tony to a different level. Yeah. And so, again, this is not a contest right now, but tell me how competitive these skaters still are with each other. Yeah. They kind of been supportive, I should say. Yeah, no, they're supportive, right, of course. But you're right, there is that competition. But, okay, I go back, I love this. Lizard King said this once. He said, all, all I'm ever doing skateboarding is just showing off for my friends. <laughs> and that's what it is. It's not like you're in competition. You're trying to impress your friends. You want them to be hyped. You want to be like, look, I did it, and they're stoked. That's, that's where it all comes from. And I think you see that even in serious competitions, still everybody's wanting to see each other rip. Nobody wants like, oh, I hope he bails so I beat him. No, it's like everybody wants to do their best. Hasoy's blasting right now. Well, Hasoy invented the rocket air, right? Yes, he did. And he, the Christ and air. Of course, right. Those are his, his signature moves. Oh, man. But I'm going to say this, like... Hasoy... Okay, McGill invented the McTwist. Hasoy, in my opinion, owns the greatest looking McTwist of all time. Uh, just the, the ones he, he did looks so great. I think everybody should aspire to do a McTwist like a soil. But that is definitely not to take anything away from the inventor, McGill, because he did it at a time when no one could even imagine that it could be done. Oh, he just did a nose grab 540 and kicked the frigid judo. And the slash. Sandro plays around with fives, I'm telling you. In fact, here, here's a Sandro story of a 540 that I saw. Sandro fell during a run once. And he was on the flat bottom, and he took, his, he took his board, he ran up the transition, jumped on his board, pumped down, and on the next wall, did a 540. One pumper. From, from flat, one pumper. One pump five? <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> doing that. All right, Ellis. So I, I remember a, I want to say it was a DC video, Jason Ellis actually doing an air and running on the wall. On the wall. Yeah. Which I've never seen anyone else do. And he did the ape hanger. He did he clung from the rafters. Remember? He he did a lean air and hooked the rafter, grabbed feel, onto it and swung around. I feel like Ellis is such a character and so larger than life that his skating is often underrated. Like he is that good. Yeah. That his, his personality is so, it fills the room that it overshadows his own skating. Right? But, you know, I gotta say this too. Switching back and forth from announcer duty to legend duty on the pipe, double dip. Yeah, that's, that's hard. When you're, when you're trying to skate a vert ramp with these dudes, you gotta be locked in. You can't be switching back and forth, being chatty Cathy on the deck and then going into like tiger mode. Well, you know, I'll, I'll let the viewers in on a little kind of unknown secret. So the legends did get to warm up this morning. Paul was skating, and it was such a rad session. There was no one in the arena. They were trying just as hard, just as much effort, just as much passion. So to your point of them feeding off each other, that happened at 8 a.m. this morning. And you're seeing it now kind of start to amplify a little bit because, of course, the crowd gets behind them. You right. know, the music, the cheers, the, the atmosphere in here is definitely helping push them. And you know, I mean, Tony Hawk thrives off this type of energy. Oh, yes. What percentage was that? 75%? Well, the first few, he kind of, he, he spun a little wonky and missed the grab. That one, he got the grab. And I feel like he was coming around on the spin. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, I'm with you. I'm going to say 75. Okay. But I'll tell you what. That la you can you can spin McTwist at 99% for a decade, and that last 1% is so hard to crack. So uh, until you're riding out of a McTwist, in some ways you're not even close. Because I've seen people where it's like you should have this next try, and they're at next try for the next five years. <laughs> yeah. It, no joke. I'm not exaggerating at all. The physics of uh, McTwist just 
they're 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 not they're not there. It shouldn't be possible. And and the the mind game of the McTwist is just such a it's just such a battle. Uh, you don't get to spot your landing. You never get to feel comfortable until you're landing. And the only way to get to a point where you're comfortable is to do a million of them. And and if you haven't done them in a long time, that feeling goes away. All right, oh, this 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 one right here might spin some people out, but most iconic graphic in this group. I I just saw McGill do an air, and I saw the skull with the snake on the bottom. To me, that has to be one of the most iconic graphics in the history of skateboarding. But what other graphics of this crew really just kind of encompass skateboarding history to you? That's a great question. I, I, any Anyone who had, had a power graphic or, or a Sims or Santa Cruz graphic in, in the 80s, I felt like locked in as an icon. But um, obviously Tony Hawk's uh, the bird skull. The bird skull. That one might be it. Uh, I also like McGill's the jet fighter before yeah, the, the, the skull and snake. Uh, and then Hasoy, simplest graphic ever. Just that triangle. Right, with his name. With his name. I had like five hammerheads in a row. So did I. The Hammerhead Mini game. And, you know, for skateboard collectors out there, pretty much every board that was ridden by these skaters right here are worth thousands of dollars if you have the original. Not that that's what it's about, but it really is kind of cool to you go on eBay and you look up, you know, original Hasoy board. Here we go. $5,000. Yeah. Oh! See, he forced that one in. It, it was a little a little weird. He went for it. And that that is a heavy slam. And He's got but that look in his eyes. He's gonna, he's gonna land it. If you see, okay, first of all, if you haven't seen his his movie till the wheels come off, it's a must watch. But the the opening scene of him trying to land the 900 just uh, in his warehouse by himself yeah. is so brutal. But the fact that he landed it after those slams, I've never seen anyone take that many slams on a trick on Bert and make the trick. I feel like that intro sequence that you're talking about really kind of shined a light on how tough Tony Hawk is. Nobody said Tony Hawk is tough for, I don't know why not, but you watch that and you realize he is one of the baddest dudes to ever ride a skateboard beyond creating all those tricks and all the, you know, all the memories that he's made for all of us. But the fact that he is literally one of the toughest toughest humans you're right a hundred percent slam like that and come back and and it goes to the idea that he is underrated yes you know that's it he, like you gotta you gotta give it up i think he may be a terminator sent from the future though to be honest yeah like pat duffy i've never like poked him and <laughs> felt he's, he's untouchable real. don't you dare i won't poke tony you're no. or turn to, turn to like saul all right this Alice. is tony hawk's podcast partner yeah he is he's so funny every second so you went did you I, so jason ellis last night casually headlined a comedy show here in salt lake city it was sold out and the reviews are in it was hilarious I people are saying their faces still hurt yeah I, I believe it we were gonna go and then our order took too long at the restaurant we missed it did you get to go no it's it's uh, uh it's rated r so it might be a little it wouldn't let you in for us <laughs> Wildcat. He is. He's a wolf mate. Quick little crumb look right there. To, to skate in front of a crowd like this is really an intense experience too. You, you get the, like, you want to you wanna show people your best stuff. And uh, sometimes if you're just hanging on and you put in five, six walls, you're just like, I want to get out. I want to pop out and feel good about this run rather than me sliding out of another run because that gets old. And But it is part of being a bird skater. Uh, every run ends with a knee slide almost exclusively. Well, we've got our part two of the who are you most excited to watch in the Legends demo social media thing. And Sandra Diaz, Lincoln Ueda, Mike Frazier. Those are the names floated out to YouTube and Twitch. YouTube says 64%. Sandro, oh, hold that thought. Okay, I'll get back to that thought. Twitch is with Sandro as well. So Sandro Diaz right now is ruling 
social media. That's for a good reason. If you have uh, questions that you want answered, you tell me, I'll ask Paul because he knows this stuff. Head to YouTube and Twitch, get in the chat, ask away. Uh, you know, don't, don't be weird about it. Give us good questions and we'll answer them, right? Uh, there's, no, there's no skateboarding question you can't answer, correct? <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been told. That's a good one, I like that. No, there's a lot, but uh, I know a lot, but I've forgotten a lot and I've never learned a few things too. I, I'm, I'm open though. I, I hear you. I see you too. I feel you. Uh, we're, I don't even know. I don't, it doesn't even matter how long we're into this because we're not going to stop until we don't these legends stop. have given everything they've got. I'm really looking forward to Hawk making the McTwist. And, but I hope for his sake that it just happens real quick because when you're bailing 540s, it takes a ton of effort to bail and to, to come up and try it again, and it's just, it, it is a, a really harsh battle, mentally and physically. So, oh. obviously everybody has their Achilles heel trick, but would you say the, the general consensus is, what are the scariest tricks in vert skating? I think a lot of the, the backside three tricks where you're, you're coming up forward and then you're turning back three and coming in fakie, blind, blind. I think those are a lot of the scariest tricks. And a lot of, a lot of tricks just to fakie, I think tend to, tend to freak people out. Um, then, I haven't even tried them, but I would say if you're trying 900s, that's when things probably get terrifying. Because you gotta blast past a 540. And you got a, a whole nother three to get through before you're safe. So I can't even I can't even talk about that. I don't well, know. Clear your schedule for tomorrow because we can pretty much guarantee that you will see a 900 tomorrow in our men's and women's semifinals or, or finals. We actually blasted through the semis today, and trust us when we tell you, skate, vert skateboarding will change tomorrow, right? I mean, I'm not dipping yeah. into superlative here. That's no, People fact. are going to be doing new tricks, higher, crazier runs, everything. It's just, skateboarding is progression. And even if it's borrowing something from 30 years and putting a new twist on it, progression comes in all shapes and forms. What was Crumb doing? Is he doing a half cap blunt right there? You know, I feel like, oh, here we go. I'm just going to let the crowd do the talking here. Yes! Come on! Dude! Chills. That Chills. Is huge. That was, the crowd's on their feet. I mean, that right there is its own historic moment. You, look at what it means to Tony. That's the greatest skateboarder to ever do it. What a moment. I mean, he just walked behind us and you can feel that energy from him. That he is special. It's got he me choked up. He, I'm not joking. It, I mean, it, the fact that he can do that, I'm with you. What a moment. What a moment. I mean, this is a demo. This is that, for fun. That's been, it's probably been, what, a year and a half? At least. You know what he's been through to get to this? Yeah. Well, you can tell how meaningful it is to Tony, and it, it, if he's feeling it that much, I mean, the, the world feels it. That was incredible. And we're right back into it. You know, that is just going to hype up this crew even more. Mike McGill there. I mean, the obvious wish now is to see McGill throw one down, see Hasoid put one down. Jeez. See Lindsay make her second McTwist. So Lindsay was the first female to ever do a McTwist. Correct. And when was that? That's that I don't know. It was probably like 15 years. I don't know. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to ch check the tape. Well, we're gonna have Lindsay in the booth with us tomorrow for the women's finals and women's best trick. So we're gonna definitely pick her brain and figure that one out as we see Sandra Diaz now flying. As usual. How much of vert skating is, is muscle memory and how much of it is just like training to, to keep 
the skills alive? Uh, I can't answer that, but I can say this. When, when you get, when you're 50 and you try street skating and you have no pop and everything feels sketchy and gross, you can still skate a half pipe relatively comfortably and smoothly if you skate it a lot. So I think maybe, maybe the answer after saying all that is muscle memory goes a long way for vert. And it's, it's a blessing as you get older. You're like, I'm glad I'm a vert skater. I'm not trying to skate a double set. Well, when we watch, you know, you watch vert through the, through the 80s. This was a, a, a really fast-paced time of innovation. How much did vert skating in, influence and inform street skating? And then it seemed like street skating kind of paid it back, right? A hundred percent. That's what happened. That was street skating at first was was mimicking vert on street, just trying Crabs to capture and, yeah. that like grinds. Like, oh, you can grind a ball, so maybe we should just grind a curb since that's all we have. That was the first trade-off, sort of. And then after street skating took, took over, then, then as street progressed past Vert with all the flip tricks, no grab stuff, uh, ledge skating, then people started imitating that on Vert. Like kickflip nose slides and right. kickflip backside lift slides. And any flip tricks with no grab, none of that stuff would have been done for a long, much longer time if it hadn't been for street. And, and two names come to mind when I think of bringing Street to Vert, Colin McKay, Danny Way. We know you guys are watching. You better be out here at Tony Hawk's Vert Alert next year. I I'm assuming we're going to be back, and I'm assuming that Danny and Colin should and I'm will be here. You. They, they should be here. They're the greatest, two of the greatest Vert skaters of all time. I want to see them on this one. Wow, that was a 12 foot five He <laughs> went too high. His He was finished spinning, but he had like six feet still to come down, so he had to bail out. So how long after Tony did Sandro start Sandro Diaz, as you see right here, how long did he, how long did it take him to learn 900? It was probably, my guess is a couple, like a year or two. Yeah, uh, and shout out to Giorgio Zatoni in Italy. He was the second person to do the nine. He only did one though. He only did one, but it was beautiful. And then, and then Sandro was the third person to make a nine, and Sandro was the first person to just wire, wire it. Is, put there, it is there any safe way to practice? I know they've invented, you know, vert ramps with kind of a padding on it. There's reservoirs and foam pits and all that, but there's no real safe way to really try these tricks well, other than just trying them, right? You know, uh, so besides 540s and 900s, I don't believe like resi ramps and foam pits do you much good. Because you're right, you have to you have to just land it. But when you want, if you're gonna spin a 900 for the first time, I would want to spin it a thousand times in the foam first. That's one of the only tricks, though. I really feel like. Hey, I want to talk about Bucky though, because he just front blunts, front blunt oh, over the the gap, which is. Just so, it's so rare. Even the best bird skating pros of today just are not doing that. Now some can, but they're 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 just not. Not everybody's out there front blunting over the gap. And Bucky's 50. Can you just uh, a quick look about uh, five skateboards in plastic lined up on the railing right there? This is an autograph hunter's dream event. The only place that you would see a crew like this. Now, the doors are open. This event is free for anyone. So if you're in the area, I mean, Salt Lake City is pretty much a quick flight from anywhere you're at. And I tell you, it will be worth it to make the trip here. It's a free event. You can come in, you feel the arena. We did have uh, some VIP kind of tickets and experiences available, which if you missed out on that, you don't need all stay that. tuned for next year. Yeah. Get on in there. I might get my crumb sign my board. For sure. And and believe me, all the pros, the legends, will be in this building tomorrow. They're not skating tomorrow. They'll be here watching. So come on out. Well, these guys and girl have really put on an incredible show for us. We're actually starting to slowly wind things down. I can't. It, time flies when you're watching the, the most iconic skateboarders in the world yeah. do what they do. You could do this that all flew day. by quick. I know, right? How long has it been? Like 10 minutes? Uh, two minutes. It feels like it's been 10 minutes. 
how physical is vert skating? It's it's pretty physical. I mean, it, every it seems like every muscle is activated, right? Yeah, yeah. Vert. Okay. People ask. Oh, my friends are friends like Ryan Fakey over the channel. People like to ask if if it's like riding a roller coaster, and I say no, not even close, because it takes so much energy, mental focus, determination. You're thinking every second. You're making all these minute adjustments every moment. It's it, it, it's a lot of work, but it's it's all it's so uh, so rewarding. I can't even explain it. If you learn, well, I I skate with some people that street skaters that try vert sometimes and then they're, they get hooked and they're like this is so fun it's just a different type of fun i've heard people call it the swing set that sounds is that weird. dorky yeah i don't like that i won't listen to those people <laughs> so this is the time in the demo when you're gonna start to see kind of those big final moves right hasoy is trying to put down a christ there his, one of his two most signature moves it's both feet off, form the form across in the air and land it. He's close. That's like when when Leonard Skinner's playing and you yell Freebird, that's a rocket air, that's a Christ air like that. That's our Freebird. Skateboarding is Freebird I like it. So the crowd is going. You know who did it? Support bird oh. skating and all of us. We're giving out it all for you. We really appreciate your support. And uh, I want to really thank Ryan Smith for inviting us into the home of the jazz to do our event to the state of Utah, to the Utah Sports Commission, Jeff Robbins. And uh, tomorrow, men's finals, women's finals, best trick. Um, and on a personal note, I just want to thank you all. That meant a lot to me. Uh, that's the, I gotta, give a, I gotta give a special shout out to Mr. Mike McGill for inventing that trick that caused me great pain and even greater pleasure. So thank you, Mike. And uh, in, in full transparency, that was my second McTwist. Uh, the first one I did a couple weeks ago with an audience of one. My dear wife, Kathy, was there watching me and it was super special. So I didn't tell you that, Jason, I'm sorry. I didn't tell anyone, but now I told you. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This has been a blast. Tomorrow's going to be even better. Thanks to all the legendary pros for giving it your all. I think Christian Osoy is going to do a Christ there for you. Of course. Let's hear it. Here we go. It's on. Oh, come on, Christian. Let's go. Let's go. We're still pushing each this other. This is a skate there. event. There's no time limit. Oh, well, there is. But anyway, thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Jason Ellis, thanks for keeping the crowd going. All right, see you tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know why Tony Hawk was thanking all of us. We need to thank him. Thank you, Tony Hawk, for bringing Tony Hawk's Vert Alert back to the state of sport here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, not only bringing his talent, his passion, which was just on display, basically making every skate fan tear up with uh, what he just accomplished, but also bringing the most perfect vert ramp in the world to Salt Lake City. Well, tonight you witnessed something very special, a Legends demo for the ages. Uh, we saw signature tricks. We saw incredible skateboarding from icons of this sport. And tomorrow we're going to see what's happening now in vertical skateboarding, men's and women's finals, along with men's and women's best trick. Of course, there's cash on the line for tomorrow. We're gonna to crown champions, but we're also going to field X Games qualifiers. So it's a double dip, you get some cash. There's Jason Ellis, he's gonna be here tomorrow too. So you know it's gonna be a good party. Let's take a look at what is about to happen at X Games. Before we go there, we wanna tell you, we got streams coming from every angle for you, YouTube, Twitch, caffeine, it's gonna be going off all day tomorrow. So we want you involved. We want you sending us questions, telling us who you're cheering for, you know, probing Paul Zitzer's brain to really get into the depths of what vert skating is. So we're gonna see you guys tomorrow morning. Before we get there, let's send it over to Ventura, California, which will be the host spot for X Games 2023.
X Games, summer, music, and you. That's right. Fans are back at X Games this summer in sunny Ventura, California, July 21st through 23rd. X Games is about to take over Ventura County Fairgrounds. Clear your calendar, July 21st through 23rd. That's three days of incredible action. We're talking skateboarding, BMX, Moto X, superstars going wild. Their best tricks, their lives on the line, literally for X Games gold. For tickets and event information, go to xgames.com. That's xgames.com. Be sure to tune in all over the place on July 21st, 23rd, ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, and of course, YouTube, Twitch. You know X Games is going to be everywhere on July 21st through 23rd. Uh, Paul, we've seen practice. We've seen some qualifying action. We've seen the legends. Just give us what you feel is going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow. What's this event going to be like? Well, you're going to see skateboarding on Burke push to the limits. Absolutely insane. 900s, a lot of McTwists, and everything in between. But I think it's just the variety of skateboarding, too. Skaters from all over. It's not just East Coast and West Coast anymore. We're going to see skaters from Japan, Australia, Brazil, America, and everywhere else. And that is cool, because now we see that international, different styles. The Japanese skaters, particularly here, are killing it. You're going to see that tomorrow as well. I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be good. Well, we uh, hope you enjoyed the Legends demo as much as we did. Um, still kind of uh, wiping some emotion out of my eyes. I don't know what happened, but that was incredible. And we've got more for you tomorrow. Tune back in bright and early. We'll be right here. The ramp will be ready. Skaters will be ready. It's going to be amazing. Tony Hawk's Vert Alert continues tomorrow. Before we get there, here's some highlights to get you hyped.